Hey guys, welcome back to Inc. Today I have in conversation with me coach Dre Legree from Georgia State. Before becoming a coach, he was drafted from playing collegiate football into the NFL with the Seattle Seahawks. Today we explore Dre's journey in the NFL bouncing from team to team and his highs and lows throughout his career. Check out this conversation and like, share and subscribe. All right, how's it going? Welcome to today's episode from Inc. We've all had one of those days where you feel like you don't matter. Everything's going wrong and no one is there to listen or relate. But here at Inc, you do matter and here we can relate. Because for all of us, there's always a something, a one thing or many things that can really affect the way we think and feel. We hope that today's conversation brings a little bit of hope to your day. And do make sure to stay connected by subscribing to the channel. Cool. All right. Well, Dre, how's it going, mate? How are you doing today? Great. Ready for the day. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, I appreciate you joining us today. You're, uh, you play a foreign sport to us Brits over here. Um, tell us a little bit about your career, where you're at now, kind of what you do for, for your job right now. Yeah, just football. Uh, I've been playing ever since I was 10 years old. Well, I'm not playing anymore, but it's been part of my life since I was 10 years old. Uh, and the only reason I started playing was because, um, oh, after school, I would like to play outside with my friends, but they were gone. I was like, well, where are y'all? <laughs> and they were like, we're at football practice. So that's when I told my mom, I was like, I want to go play football. And it's not because I liked it. I just wanted to hang out with my friends. Um, that first year, I wasn't even good at it. Uh, <laughs> I just didn't know how to play. And I was uh, soft, too. I was a, a soft little boy. Um, but it was the next year I got good at it. I don't even know. Just something clicked. I started learning football. So it became to be one of my favorite sports. And then uh, thankfully, I moved down south to Georgia to play high school football because the quality is better there. Um, ended up being successful enough to get a full scholarship to play football at Appalachian State University, and that was uh, in North Carolina. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a great career there, uh, lots of accolades, um, a couple of records, and then I was able to get drafted. So I was blessed with that opportunity by the Seahawks um, in the fifth round in 2011. Uh, didn't have a crazy NFL career, which is fine. Um, but everybody can't say they've been drafted, so I'll never forget yeah. that. Uh, got to see lots of places. Um, then I ended up playing two years in Canada, um, which was really neat. That was my favorite experiences. I uh, met some good people, a good family out there. Uh, but then just football's a business, a uh, lot of uncertainty. Um, I needed just normalcy. I needed, I just didn't like bouncing around. So then I decided to stop uh, pursuing the football dream after that and following other things. Man, I was passionate about kids. So I ended up working in an elementary school for a year. Then I was uh, got a job opportunity at my old high school as a PE teacher and I was the football coach there. And now I'm at Georgia State University uh, working for the football team as a football recruiter. Incredible. So you, you've had a, a crazy career, which I want to delve into. I got a couple of questions on kind of what happened there in the NFL. But when you were a kid growing up, um, you mentioned like at the start, you was just like, I'm just hanging out with my mates or that's probably a British way of saying it. But my friends yeah. and, and being in school, just being a kid, wanting to be around your friends. But did you know that like you were set apart as like elite how, how early did you know okay I might actually be good at this good enough to go a little bit further than just hanging out with my friends and playing uh it's hard to say because so I first started playing football in Texas when I was 10 Texas is one of the you know it's one of the biggest states and uh I think it, it might be the biggest state but either one or two um, so football is huge there. So it was a good place to start. But then I moved up to New York, upstate New York, 
and football, just the quality isn't as good. But I was still a good player. But I, like, separated myself from then in middle school. I was always, like, one of the top athletes. But then we moved down to Georgia when I started high school. And the guys are just different. Like, they're just bigger, they're tougher, they're meaner. So I kind of lost some uh, confidence as a, a player. I was like, I'm not the, the biggest, I'm not the strongest, I'm not the fastest. Um, but I just always, I was extremely competitive when I was younger. So as time went along and I got bigger, older, I started realizing like, this is my chance. And I just felt better than a lot of people. But it wasn't until my senior year of high school where I had a football coach that believed in me and he just started to utilize me more. So it just built my confidence. And at that point, I was like, can't nobody stop me. Even if they could, I just had that that type of mentality. And it definitely mm-hmm. helped me, um, you know, be able to put on a good enough uh, highlight tape to get uh, recruited in college. Um, but it was my junior, senior year of high school when I felt like I could really um, play football at the next level. So what age is that? Uh, 16, 16 years old. Yeah. 16, so you're 16 years old. And, and you mentioned it was like having that coach to, to really speak into your life. What, what were some things that you remember? Like, because he did that, like that really changed and impacted my trajectory oh, of my career. No, no worries, man. My computer is about to die. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put the charger on. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. You're talking about uh, my coach. What'd you say? Yeah. What were some things that maybe he spoke into your life that really changed the trajectory of your your football career and 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 flicked that switch at the age of 16 where you're like, do you know what? I can do this. Uh, it was so long ago. I don't fully remember. I just know that he made me. A, he told me like I was like had to be a leader of this team because I wasn't a, a big vocal guy. Um. Mm-hmm. I just remember him telling me like how uh, important of a role I was going to have on this team going into my senior year and uh, for the success. And he just always found, he was like, guys are going to target you, but I'm going to find a way, other ways to get you the ball because you have to be creative um, in football, especially when uh, you're like one of the better players. Uh, People are going to like even potentially double team you type things. So he just, always just say like we're we're gonna find ways for you to make an impact it's awesome it's good so you you go on from being a kid 16 you get the scholarship for college which we over here we can't appreciate how big college sport is there in america in america that's a huge deal and then even bigger than that you get drafted in the nfl for the seattle seahawks and then am I right in saying I, I don't fully understand it because I was trying to research and I'm like, I don't know why, but was there a reason you couldn't play in your first season with the Seahawks? Is that right? Oh, I just ended up getting cut. Oh. Um, just the NFL is, I mean, it's the, the highest level of competition. It's not like other sports where they have like feeder programs or just other uh, reliable options to play in. There's like... Mm. It's the NFL, and then you have the CFL, and then there was, like, some a couple arena football leagues. Um, it's not like basketball where you have the uh, NBA Development League, but you can also go play overseas, um, soccer, or y'all's fo- football. Um, there's just so many other options to play. It's mm. really the NFL is it, and then some people are willing to go to the CFL, but if you don't make it in the NFL, it's almost like you're done. Yeah, uh, so just the level of competition was crazy, um, and it just didn't work out. I just got out beat, and I was – it hurt, of course. Uh, it was mm-hmm. the first time in a long time that I was told no, uh, and that yeah. you weren't good enough. Uh, and that was a tough pill to swallow. But then after that, that first time, I was fine because I was cut maybe eight more times after that. But then I just realized the business aspect of it and uh, just kept fighting, just kept trying to find a place on the team. But Mm. it's just extremely competitive. Everybody's good. It just comes down to, like, making plays. And the little opportunities that you have, you have to make plays. Yeah. 
So you go from obviously the high of being drafted into the NFL and then that first no, how did you bounce back from that? What, what was it like trying to pick yourself up and just remind yourself, actually, my value lies elsewhere? Or how, how did you bounce back from that? Well, it was, it was very hard. I was, I mean, I was the first time I cried in a long oh, wow. time. Uh, yeah, I cried in the office when he told me. Um, but the hardest part was just people not understanding. They just thought that since I was drafted, like I'm automatically on the team. And there is some truth to it. Like if you're drafted in the earlier rounds, um, like first to fourth round, it's a lot more money they put because when you get drafted, you're guaranteed a sign-in bonus. And the sign-in bonuses are higher for the earlier rounds. But I knew even if you got drafted in the fifth round and after, like you still have the potential of being cut. But people didn't understand that. So that was like the – I just didn't want to tell anybody. I was like embarrassed and I felt like – I felt like a failure because um, hmm. I didn't make the team and just nobody understood it. Uh, but like I said, I started to learn how the league worked and I ended up, uh, the Cardinals ended up calling me two weeks later to join their practice squad. Um, so I basically did that for the whole rest of my career for two years. I just would be at a team for like three weeks. They'd cut you um get picked up by another team they cut you and I was just bouncing around just trying to find a home in the team so that part obviously would be exciting because I'm like getting the call oh this week I'm going to New York uh, I'm going to California like so it was still kind of cool but then I didn't like that either because trying to like join a new team it's it's just like moving to a, a new city and joining a new school like you don't know anyone you're trying to yeah. develop uh, friendships you're learning new cultures so that part wasn't fun but um I just always felt like I was potentially going to get a chance and I just kept working hard kept getting you know picked up by teams and after the two years uh nobody else called me I ended up working out by myself for a whole year and uh if you don't make it within the like two to three year range then you're pretty much done as far as the NFL so then that's when I went to the CFO. Man, it's a, it's a heck of a journey. Like we, for us, the general public, we, you know, we look at uh, professional athletes and we just think, you know, banking all the dollar, you know, living the dream. Like I, a friend of mine plays professional soccer and we had a conversation on the channel and he went from losing his job through injury, you know, playing for a really low division team to he's just been promoted to the championship and it's like these highs and lows. And I feel like you have to have that firm foundation set in stone. What are some foundational things in your, you know, your character that you feel have been able to carry you through to get you to this point? Uh, I just always believed, um, just God had something in store for me, even how, my whole life came about there's just been so many you know god moments and um even with how i got my scholarship like i didn't even uh tell you how that happened go for um, it well like i told you i didn't have a good year until my senior year of high school so colleges we recruit guys after their junior year um so with me not having any highlights, like I was on no one's radar. So no one knew about me. I had a friend that graduated from my high school and she went to Appalachian State two years prior. And she knew some guys on the football team. And she was like, Dre, send me your highlight tape and I'll give it to this guy. So I did that and he gave it to the coaches. And then two weeks later, like they were calling me wanting to uh, offer me a scholarship. If I never knew her and she never went there and she never gave him that highlight tape, like nobody was recruiting me because no one knew about me. Um, so like that alone, like just was just crazy to me because I don't know what I would have done. And the same thing with the football, like I was confident in high school and then I get to college and I, I lack that confidence. 
and just you know god's always testing you in certain ways and he, he gives you these opportunities and there was just games where i remember i had this one game where i had three interceptions and uh 10 tackles and like that game built my confidence. And after that, like the skies was the limit. So then I get to the NFL super high again, and I'm told I'm not good enough. And I have to, to find ways to, to stay grounded and, and keep working hard. Um, there was a time where I was like depressed and I gave up on football. Like I was like, I'm done working out. And was just partying and going out and playing video games. And the Oakland Raiders called me for a workout. And I was, I went to the workout and I was out of shape. I basically, I threw up during the workout. Ooh. <laughs> I was like not prepared. I was so upset about that. But I told myself like never again, but that was just like a life moment just to always be ready and also mm -hmm. always have a plan B. So even after you know, not getting picked up or finishing football. Like I always knew that I would have to do something else. So I made sure I graduated from college, um, found other things I was passionate about, um, kept building connections, just staying grounded and always having, you know, something else to do if sports didn't work out. And, you know, thankfully it did. And um, I wouldn't be where I'm at now if I didn't stay grounded and always, you know, was looking at the next move and realizing that there's life after football. So good, man. You know, something I've, I've noticed in, in my career with music is, like you said, if you're just, if you stay ready, if you stay prepared, if you stay rehearsed and practice and stay in shape, then opportunities will arise. Whether, mm -hmm. you know, people listen to this believe, whoever they believe those opportunities are coming from, those opportunities will arise. And if you stay ready, stay prepared, if you're the hardest working, and when that, that moment comes, you're able to take it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's a cool story. About, well, sucky story for the Oakland Raiders opportunity, but it's, it's a good le life lesson for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, man, so as, you know, as someone that's been an elite athlete and as someone now that looks to younger guys um, for elite performance and you're wanting to see the best out of the players in, in the team, what are some of the key things that you look for in an elite personality or an elite athlete? I um, mean, we look for leaders. Uh, we want guys that, I mean, that can lead. We also want good character guys. I mean, you hear that all the time, but you just want good kids on the team that do the right thing, you know, stay out of trouble. We have zero tolerance on any run-ins with the law. So if you, I mean, you get in trouble, you're kicked off the team. There's no three strikes or anything like that. Um, and then we look for coachable kids and kids that are willing to be coached. Uh, mm -hmm. That's huge in football. You can't keep making the same mistakes. Um, you got to find guys that can learn, learn the sport. And, and are like I said, willing to be coached because there are some cocky, stubborn kids. Uh, because any any scholarship athlete that comes here, you know, they were the one of the best kids on their high school team. And then you get to college and it's a different story. Um, so leaders, good character, and uh, coachable kids. That's what we look for. It's good. And what how, how do you guys define a leader? Like what leadership qualities do you look for? The thing is, is we, with so many guys, so we have anywhere from 100 to 115 guys on the team. Wow. And it kind of just comes naturally. When you have that many people, the leaders are going to come on their own. But mm. we do, uh, you find it in like a big thing is during conditioning. Um, you you see like who's going to step up, who's going to call that player out. Like, because that's a big thing with leadership. A lot of people are afraid to to speak up and, and call someone out for not doing their job and, and holding each other accountable. So we do it just through tests, like with conditioning and and uh, pushing them mentally and just seeing if they're going to break down type things. But it, for the most part, it comes naturally. You start to realize like, oh, yeah, he's going to be a leader on the defense or this guy's the leader on the offense. Um, mm -hmm. It's nothing we specifically do. It just comes out with um, 100 guys on the team. You know, five of them are going to be leaders. 
Yeah, it's something I, I don't profess to be uh, super knowledgeable about your sport, but something I love about um, football, I was going to call it American football, but that's totally not cool when you're talking to an actual football coach. Um, something I, I admire about it and, and appreciate with it is it really shows qualities outside of sport, strategy, leadership, you know, hard work ethic. It seems to just encompass so many great kind of leadership qualities and qualities that can cross over into the, the big wide world. So it's, it seems, again, I'm a novice, but it seems like an incredible sport to pick out leaders and really guide them um, off the pitch as well. So, Yeah, for sure. And I definitely think it's other sports as well, but um, you hear it a lot that companies, they, they want to hire football players uh, just because, I mean, commu communication alone, communication is so important in football, uh, just from, you know, execution of a play and everybody being on the same page. Um, if one person, even if we call the wrong play, perhaps, but if we're all on the same page, like, it's okay because we communicated that. But when you have two people doing different things, then, then it's not going to work. Uh, they love football players because they're good communicators. They work in big groups. It's one of the biggest, it's the biggest team out there in sports. Um, know how to just work well with so many different uh, bodies, so many different characters, um, so many different personalities. Uh, you just learn so much from football. You deal with tons of adversity. Um, it can be anything from like losing season, losing seasons to developing a winning program to, you know, injuries coming back from an ACL tear. And like I said, that's all sports as well. But you just, it's amazing like how many stories you hear about um, football, like either changing their lives or inspiring their lives or making it even better. And even with me, I mean, every job I've gotten, um, it's been involved with football in some way or fo form or fashion. It always come back to football. So I'm forever thankful for the sport and I hope to uh, be around it my whole life. So. Yeah, man. Well, mate, I appreciate your time this morning. I know you guys have practice to get to and I imagine it's pretty hot right there in Atlanta, Georgia right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know y'all do Celsius, but it's been in the 90s. <laughs> do you know what? I reckon it's close here today and we don't have AC indoors. So right now I'm in my little studio cooking with the windows closed. So uh, uh, I, I'm going to go cool down whilst you go, go warm up on the practice field. So, mate, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, man. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Dre. I don't know about you, but when I watch athletes on the television, I forget that they're human just like you and I. When an athlete is cut from a team, it affects their entire family. A lesson I've learned from today's conversation is to stay ready for opportunities. Dre had a huge opportunity arise with the Oakland Raiders, but he failed to prepare for that opportunity. He failed to stay ready when the opportunity arose. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. Kai, you still watching? You must have something better to do by now. Seriously though, thanks so much for watching today's episode from Inc. Remember, we all have those days where you feel like you don't matter. Everything's going wrong and no one is there to listen or relate. But here at Inc, you do matter. Remember, here you're included in something. You're part of a community where you are included. We want to inspire your future and bring a little bit of hope to your day. And before we wrap up, please do subscribe and stay connected to Inc. so we can continue to give you content that delivers a little bit of hope. See ya.